and taking a look at the news, peaceful. That's how Chief Deputy Aaron Evans describes last night's Campbell County basketball game with Halls. You may remember that a Knoxville man was handcuffed and taken to the county jail the last time these two teams played. That was back on January 13th at John Brown Gym. 27-year-old David Austin Thomas of Knoxville was involved in a scuffle with police after the last Halls Campbell County game. Thomas was charged with disorderly conduct and will appear in Campbell County Court next Tuesday. Last night was peaceful to Evans, who tells WLAF that the Campbell County fans were respectful and classy. Evans adds that the school security officers from both school administrations coordinated their efforts. Evans says that Knox County assigned eight officers to the game. That's in addition to Evans, who was there along with some other plainclothes officers. Two hit and runs in the same day. First, just before lunch, two cars collided on Old Highway 63 east of La Follette at Glade Springs Road. Sheriff's deputies explained to Channel 12 that the driver of one car was taken to the La Follette Medical Center with non-life-threatening injuries. The other driver bolted from his car and ran. Sheriff's deputies are still looking for the man. WLAF's David Graham was on the scene of another hit-and-run right before 3 o'clock this afternoon. Graham says that three vehicles were involved in an accident on the four-lane in La Follette near Hunter's Branch Road. One woman was taken to the La Follette Medical Center with non-life-threatening injuries. Witnesses tell WLAF that a driver in a late-model black Chevy pickup sped away from the scene. La Follette police are investigating. Tennessee smoke-free and Kentucky may soon be. If you're used to smoking in public places when you visit neighboring Whitley and Bell counties, you may soon not be able to do so. Lawmakers in the Bluegrass State are discussing the possibility of making restaurants, workplaces, and other indoor sports smoke-free. Officials with Kentucky Voices for Health, say the policy champions a single goal to improve the health of all Kentuckians. Opponents to a statewide smoke-free law believe the decision should be left up to individual towns and cities. Estimates are that one in every four adults in Kentucky smoke. Another compelling byproduct of a statewide smoke-free policy is a sizable savings on health care costs. The state of Tennessee has been smoke-free in public places since October of 2007. Construction continues at a La Follette health care facility. WLAF's David Graham files this report from Cumberland Village Care and Rehab Center on Davis Road. There's lots of construction going on at the Cumberland Village Care and Rehabilitation Center behind the Long John Silvers. New additions are being built and the employees and residents are very excited about. Sharon and I were invited to have lunch down there the other day and we got a tour of the new facilities that are being built. Right now they have 18 employees with 182 beds and after the renovations and additions are complete, they will have the same number of employees and the same number of beds, but they will be brand spanking new and lots more room for the residents. Administrator John Bowers and Karen himself, who's assistant director, are very excited about the new additions, and rightfully so. They are scheduled to be done by May the 2nd of this year. I know the overall so project that they're working on, you're looking at May. May the 2nd is our... Completion, it's completion for at this point. Wow. Some of the work will be completed sooner, but again, the entire renovation should be done by May the 2nd. Now, they took us to the rehab and recovery suite. They will have 18 new rooms, and four will be private rooms. They're very nice, and of course, they will have the latest in facilities such as private bathrooms and even private televisions. They will have walking trails outside the new facility, and they will be all different terrains to help the patients rehab in a more real environment. At one end they will have a complete workout room with the latest in workout equipment, 
Offices will be off to the side for the therapist to use. A full glass front will enclose the front of the workout area, and they even have Wii games to help patients with their rehab and recovery, so although it's work, it's still a lot of fun for the patients and therapists alike. Now, they have bake sales to help raise money for all these things, and they really do appreciate the support of the community. This is David Grimm reporting from Cumberland Village Care and Rehab Center for WLF TV 12. Cumberland Village is on Davis Road behind Rainbow Ford. And we close this evening on an upbeat note. Cougar Sports. First, it is National Signing Day for college football hopefuls and a Cougars college bound. Campbell County High lineman Logan Hunter signed this afternoon to play for the Tusculum College Pioneers. Probably one of the most important days of my life. Uh, today at 7.40, I signed to go to Tusculum College. Cougar coach Justin Price tells WLAF that one of the skills the Tusculum coaches like best about Hunter is that he finishes his blocks. The Cougar football season begins August 17th with Seymour at home. The complete 2012 schedule for the Cougars is found on our web channel, 1450WLAF.com. Congratulations are in order for the Campbell County Lady Cougars basketball team. Coach Ryan Browning's squad clinched their regular season district title last night. A 53-32 to win at Halls improves the Lady Cougars to 19-5 and on the season and a perfect 13-0 and in District AAA. The Lady Cougars have three more games in the district before the tournament begins the week of the 13th at Oak Ridge. David Graham has lots more coming up in his sports report. And that's a look at the latest news on this first day of February. Stay tuned for the press release from the Campbell County Sheriff's Department coming up next. Time now to check the activity around the county from the past 24 hours with the Campbell County Sheriff's press release. There are 11 names on the arrest report today. Patricia Lee Bunch, 36, of 105 Wallace Lane in Jacksboro for domestic assault. 33-year-old Joseph M. Clark of Stinkin' Creek Road in La Follette for violation of probation. Melissa Ruth Drawn, age 20, of Sugar Hollow Road, La Follette, for aggravated assault by domestic violence. 33-year-old Richie Paul Hawkins of Cane Creek Road in Lake City for vandalism over $1,000 and theft of property between $1,000 and $9,999. Robert Darrell Hayes, 55, of 136, Little Bit Lane in Caraville was picked up and held for Knox County. 27-year-old Lucinda Nicole Haynes of Demery Road in La Follette for possession of drug paraphernalia and on a hold for another agency. David A. Ridner, 44, of Higdon Lane, La Follette for domestic violence by assault, court-imposed time to serve, and two counts of attachment for child support. 33-year-old Louis Everett Walden of West Central Avenue, La Follette, for theft under $500. Samuel Kenton West, age 40, of Adam Hollow Lane in Pioneer for reckless driving, felony evading arrest, evading arrest, aggravated assault on an officer by a motor vehicle, reckless endangerment, leaving the scene of an accident without due care, violation of the registration law, the Tennessee financial law, and improper backing. Daniel Eric Williams, 31, of 204, Ridner Lane in Jacksboro, for theft of property over $500 and theft of property under $500. And last today, 65-year-old Willis Worley, of Williamsburg was picked up and held for another agency. 
Thank you for joining us for this portion of our news on this first day of February, and we'll be looking for you back here again tomorrow. Good February 1st, everybody. Welcome into your birthdays and anniversaries. Brought to you by Eastside Pizza and Deli and WLAF. So you're celebrating a birthday and anniversary today. Roger Wood starting off our birthday list today. Jim Jimbo Ferris Jr. celebrates a birthday today. Got a belated birthday back from Monday. Julia Ayers, nine years old, back on Monday. And Sherry McCamey celebrates a birthday today. Happy birthday to all of you. Hope you're having a good day. Also, we, uh, well... I thought we had some anniversaries today, but I guess we don't. So if your birthday or anniversary are sometime this week, you need to get in your information here to the station before early Friday morning. That's when we'll have the drawing for two free buffet dinners both for the uh, birthday side and the anniversary side. So I guess you can look at it as four, uh, two, uh, four uh, free buffet dinners from Eastside Pizza and Deli. So uh, you need to get in your information here, 562-1450. 566-1450 or 562-3557. You can email it to WLAF at BellSouth.net. If you want to fax it, you can do it that way. 562-5764. And that does it for our birthdays and anniversaries today. Hope you guys have a good evening. See you back here tomorrow. <laughs>